everybody, Bucket and Subtle here, and I am making today um, hot water bath salsa. And we got a box of Roma tomatoes, and um, so I'm cutting them up. And basically, what I'm doing is I am letting them um, drain. So this has been draining while I've been cutting. It's just been sitting here while I've been filling it up. This is how much liquid has already come off the tomatoes. Look at that. I'm just gonna dump that one stick them in your sink wash them because when you get them from the fruit stand they're gonna have dirt on them but you know they come directly from the fruit stand right out of the the farm right, right. out of the ground directly to you and then I take a tomato and you want to take out the top take out the bottom and you don't have to take off too much because that's still good tomato that's tomato you could use but we're gonna compost it and then what I do is I just cut it down the center and then I don't want this little part right here so I just flay it out. No, I just do that. I just flay it out. Sorry my hands in the way. But yeah, I just kind of flay it out. Cut it out, cut a little triangle out like that. Flip them over. And then I'm just cutting chunks because I'm then also going, we're going to put them in the, um, the big cook kettle and we're going to cook them down a little bit too so to get even more liquid and stuff out of them question from yeah. a viewer okie dokie why do you not take the skins off like a lot of people tell you to um mainly i like the skins but i i think it's a step that really is pointless you're wasting a whole lot of time and effort that really you know a lot of people spend so much time slaving away in the kitchen which is great you still tell people you slaved away in the kitchen but um, I don't really think it's, there's a point. I mean, it, it's a good source of fiber and vitamins and um, it cooks down when you cook it in the stove pot. Um, anyone who has any other questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. I am trying to get a lot better <laughs> about um, answering comments now that I'm not spending so much time in the hospital. Yay. Um, and we are trying to get more back into things and posting more videos and posting more things. Um, I still have a little issues with Facebook, but I am trying to get it more updated and stuff as we are getting more back into doing this. So, be looking for more updates from us, and, um, hey, I hope to see you all back. Tomato fingers. Yay. Tomato fingers. Um, so, um, this is so far what I've got in here, and what I did to kind of measure, to give you guys an idea, is I poured it into my pitcher. <laughs> And as you can see, I have about a third of a pitcher here, and I have one pitcher in here. 5.3 quarts of tomatoes. Stove, and I'm going to let it cook for cook down for about an hour to an hour and a half um, to get even more of that liquid out of there. So every so often, just come around, stir it, put the lid on it, leave it alone, walk off, and go do something else. Okay, so I have started in on the green bell peppers. Um, some of them have started turning a little bit red. I'm cutting them in large chunks because well, I'm going to put them in my food processor and, and, and cut them up a little bit. And so I'm cutting them up. Basically, I'm taking the top off this one. <laughs> and so I have a way of, um, I have an interesting way of cutting my bell peppers, especially if they're shaped like this um, with a nice bottom. Um, basically, I fillet my bell peppers. <laughs> so, in order to um, vein them, basically, because you don't want that white vein, and it can be quite thick sometimes. So, basically, I cut out my pieces. And uh, you can, once you get doing this, you can actually get quite fast. So, see, this one doesn't have a vein there where it normally would. And so, you can actually get quite fast at this. And <laughs> it leaves a little, like, um, little starfishy type thing usually. This one's only got three. And then mom, I'm gonna leave these for her and she's gonna do the same with these scraps as she did with the tomatoes. And she's going to dehydrate them and break them down. I just take this, everything I can off of it and we're going to toss that part away. And now this is going in my bin. I'm just going to roughly cut it. <laughs> There's a little small vein there. I don't really care about a few seeds because what I'll do is when I go to put these in the food processors I'll probably just rinse those little pieces off so I'm not really too concerned about you know sitting here nitpicking them off scraping them off fillet them. No, look at this one so there's another thing you can do just cut around your bottom if you want cut your bottom off like that cut your bottom off 
find your veins, slice it. You can also do it like this so that you're a little bit more secure if you like. And then just slice your vein off. That's your vein. You don't want that part. That's the part that's very bitter. Um, it just doesn't taste very appetizing when you go to eat it. It's just very, very bitter. Um, and then, of course, any little bits of pieces that are bad that you don't want. Those I'll put down there because we don't really want mom getting a hold of those. But again, just nice rough chop pieces. Because I'm going to do a little bit of cheating. So, like I said. But yeah, that's it. I can't help it, folks. I I have kind of a little bit of a dark humor sometimes. And I'm, I'm a little bit quirky. But I, I found a, a bell pepper and it, it wanted to say hi to you. So, just a little side growth. Um, nice. Looks like maybe a little vo a vine maybe was starting to come out this way. And then mm -hmm. they, it looked like they maybe cut it off. And so it started to shrivel in on itself. But it's like, hi. How are you? I'm about to get cut out and put into a salsa. <laughs> See you all later. I am breaking down the jalapenos. Make sure I always wear gloves. Um, so as you can see, I have long hair. And even though I have my hair pulled back so that it doesn't end up in our food, hopefully, fingers crossed, knock on wood, um, it still gets in my face because I have little baby hairs. So make sure you wear gloves so you're not, you know, wiping your face when you're playing with peppers. Because uh, you end up in the emergency room. You don't want to do that. So now I'm breaking down my jalapenos. And basically, I'm just topping them. Body them. We're just tossing those. And then I want the flavor of the jalapenos. I don't necessarily want the heat. And one thing I've learned about these jalapenos is even if you take out the parts that create the heat, they are still very spicy. So the parts that you don't want for the heat... Um, you, this is the meat, and if you look, this is a seed pod, and this is what's called the vein. So the seed pod, of course, you don't want to eat that, so let's get rid of that. Just slice that out. Uh, just pop it out. Okay, so then you're left with some seeds and this vein. So, so what I'm doing is I just, I'm just de-veining it, is what it's kind of called. At least that's what I call it. So I'm just de-veining these. I am going to rinse off the seeds later, again, just like with the bell peppers when I go to put them in. And then this is what I'm left with, is a little bit of meat from the actual bell pepper. Now, what I noticed with these, excuse me, not bell pepper, but jalapeno. What I noticed with these jalapenos is that the meat of these jalapenos still contain quite a bit of heat, even though I have de them and seeded them. So this is going to be quite spicy enough for us for our salsa. Also, due to my health and restrictions placed on me by my doctors, even though I absolutely adore uh, spicy food and can eat extremely spicy food, I am not allowed spicy food. So depending on what your medical is, what your doctor allows, what your personal preferences are, you know, spices to your preferences, taste. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention, I was talking with mom about this kind of in between videos that we were doing. Uh, when I have helped um, people learn how to cook before, you know, find ways that this is fun for you. I talk about how I, you know, fillet my, my jalapenos and I fillet things or I do this and I do that. That may not be the technical term, you guys, but that's what makes it fun for me is, is using those terms or, or calling it that or, or cutting it a certain way. I have found things that make it fun for me. If you don't have fun with your cooking, you're not going to cook. You're going to do one meal. You're going to hate it. You're not going to have fun doing it, and you're going to be like, this sucks, I don't want to do it no more. And you're going to move on, and you're going to continue buying box goods or fast food, and that, no, just no. And if you've never had a dish made by somebody who loves what they're doing, I cry for you. I cry for you. Anyway, I am breaking down these jalapenos. Get out all your little spices. And like I said again, I am going to rinse off the what seeds I have in there right before I put them in the food processor. So very little seeds are actually adhering to them. I will rinse those off. And when I get ready to uh, put them in my food processor and process them all up, I'll show you that stuff. Thank you. So mom's like, let me take you doing the onions. Sure, let's take you just bawling my eyes out. Yeah, that's really what y'all want to see. Yeah, so basically, <laughs> I had 
five huge Walla Walla onions that I got. Not all of this is going to be for the salsa. We're doing other things also. And so basically, I'm just taking off the green parts, the, the parts that, are, that you can't really use, and I am then just um, breaking it down. Some of this, um, mom is going to be dehydrating. Um, and I'm just kind of trying to break it down so I can cut it, basically. And basically, oh hey, wrong side. Good thing I caught that. The tears, people, it's the tears. So basically, I am just making chunks because, again, I'm going to food process this. And now I'm just chunking the onion. Getting ready for the uh, food processor. Took all of our garlic that we're going to use. And then I took some of our um, peppers and make sure I'll show you in a minute. And I went ahead and I sauteed them up in just a little bit of olive oil. And we're not going to mix this in just yet. So I'm going to set this off to the side. But what I wanted to show you was, this is our bell peppers that I have put in the food processor because my hands just won't do it today. There's all of our jalapenos, my green onions, and then my onions. Now you'll see that there's a lot of liquid on these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a strainer when I before I put them in there, but I'm not to that point just yet. What I'm doing right now is I'm getting ready to add some of the liquids that we need to the sauce. I've got it boiling back there at a nice little boil. So what we're going to do now is I am using about, we said about 5.3 core tomatoes and half a cup. So then I'm gonna fill that up to about half. So then it's about two thirds of a cup that way. I went ahead and I just squeezed um, some lime juice and it's in here. So oh, I, I, that looks well more than half a cup to me, but let's take a look. So I'm just gonna measure my half a cup here. Okay, well there's half a cup, and look at that folks, I got leftovers, which is exactly what we wanted. Perfect. There we go, perfect amount, look at that, there's my lime juice, I'm just going to stir it up, there we go, and then I'm going to get my spices together that I want to put in there, and you spice it all up, like this. I'm going to keep it kind of simple to start with. I am using cumin. Now mine's in this little baby food container. You know us, we like to reuse, recycle. But I get my cumin um, wholesale because I really like cumin. And so here's, I'm gonna use cumin, um, some all natural coarse Mediterranean sea salt, thanks to my friend Laura who sent me this. Yay, Laura. Yeah, um, some black pepper and some paprika. Um, I'm gonna put in probably just, I'm going to put in just a tablespoon at a time, stir it all up, taste it, and then add in another tablespoon at a time, add it all in, stir it up, taste it. Taste it each round, see what you want. This is all for you. So do what you want. So I think I have the spices kind of what I want. And what I'm going to do is I am going to take out some sampling and I'm going to let it cool while I talk to you about the spices. So just a little bit of a taste test. So what I did for seasoning. <laughs> if you'll see, I, I used all my cumin. So there was about three tablespoons of cumin that I put in. I put in two tablespoons of our black pepper. I did one tablespoon of the Mediterranean sea salt. And I did about one and a half tablespoons of the paprika. So um, now, I am going to taste it. And this is pretty much, we've been tasting it as we went. I added a tablespoon, added a pinch, added this, stirred that, let it boil down a little. And so now this is kind of what I think I am gonna go with. Oh, that's so good. And then what I'll do next is I am going to add all of the, um, the raw stuff. So here we go. Hang on. I'm going to give this around to her. Oh, that's delicious. Delicious, delicious. Mmm, chips and salsa. Yay, yay, yay. I'm so eating it. <laughs> that's really good. It's spicy without burning you. It's just got that nice little burn, you know, a little spiciness. And there we go. So um, now I'm going to add everything in and I'm going to let it cook down just a little, down a little bit. And so what I did was everything has been added. All of the, what I did was I added the green peppers. The onions, the bell peppers, the jalapenos, everything that you saw that we had already used in the food processor has been added. 
Now I had and and the stuff I sauteed also, the garlic and all that. And then I let it kind of just kind of meld and cook together for about 15 minutes while I worked on tasting it. So once I got everything in there, I still wanted to taste it. And what I ended up doing is I ended up adding just a pinch more salt for our preference. And then it was still missing something. Well, I happen to have a black pepper grinder. And so I added just a pinch of fresh ground black pepper and that was perfect. Now, another thing I would recommend is if you have, if you use a specific chip, like if you like chips and salsa just as a, a snack, I would recommend if you happen to have your favorite chip on hand, check it out, see if it works. We just happen to use Sunita's chips, but we had a, a, a little bit still on hand. So I did this with mom. I'm like, hey mom, you want to try a taste of chips with the salsa? Oh wow, that's really good. And remember, you don't want it perfectly yum, yum. salted because if you use chips that are already salted, that's going to be an additional amount of salt into your salsa. Yeah, I wouldn't add any more so salt. That's perfect. So I kept it just a little bit. Mom was like, you know, I could use just a little bit more salsa. And I was like, well, wait a sec. <laughs> you yeah, that's know, because really the chips are salted too. Yum, 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 yum. Mm. That's so good. Very good. So now it's ready to be jarred up and ready for canning. So that's it. We'll show you the end results when we're done. 10 pint jars of salsa. Mm -hmm. Amazing.